Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a marvelous day. Well, it's time for week six of weekly Q&A. Wow, I can't believe it's been six weeks already. This is where we get your Samsung questions answered. And if you have any Samsung questions, please drop them down in the comments section below or on any video for that matter. And I'll pick them up and we'll get them featured in a future Q&A video. As usual, timestamps will be down in the description. We have a lot of ground to cover today. So let's go ahead and get to this week's first question. Our first question comes to us from Dima, a longtime supporter of the channel. Thank you so much, Dima. Dima writes in, good afternoon. Please help me. I want to buy a Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, but I'm worried if the Fusion 360 program can make money on it. If it's easy for you to check it, I would be very grateful to you. There is no such video on YouTube using the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. I think this two second video can help someone else. And yes, I almost forgot Fusion 360 is free. And uh, Dima also had a follow-up question to this. Thank you very much for your work. If you don't mind, can you also please check how the S Pen behaves with Fusion 360? Looking forward to next week. And once again, thank you very much and have a nice day. So Dima, no problem. Happy to help you out. Let's go ahead and grab the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and give Fusion 360 a try. All right, we got the Book 2 Pro 360 with Fusion 360 loaded up on it. This is a maxed out version. So this is the i7 1260p with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, the installation was very straightforward, only took a few minutes, um, but right off the bat, you do see we have a little disclaimer here. The computer's graphics driver or hardware may be limiting performance. And the reason we're seeing this message is because of the integrated graphics not having dedicated RAM. This uses VRAM, so it's shared system memory. However, I feel like this application is running pretty darn good. So uh, as you can see here, we've got this uh, project loaded up here. As I zoom in and out, it's pretty smooth, as you can see. Uh, a little bit of jitters, but nothing major. Um, and this is a sample project that you can just uh, load up. It comes default with the program. Um, and one of the things we can do too is play this model to take a look at the performance. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. You'll know this better than me, my friend, because I know nothing about CAD. So hopefully this resonates a little bit with you while this is getting uh, shown on the screen and rendering out this model for us. And we're gonna do it one more time and take a look at the actual CPU and GPU performance. All right, so that finished up that render there or model. I'm not even sure what you really call it. I watched a couple YouTube videos prior to doing this just to get familiar with it a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think some uh, courseware is definitely needed. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And then we're gonna check out the system performance here at the same time. You can see here, it's doing a pretty minimal load while it's doing this. CPU 1%, GPU 2, 3% while it's doing this. So it's not using too much of the system resources at all. Um, so I think the performance is pretty decent. Um, I don't really know what you're looking for here. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully that resonates with you when we played the model. And as far as the S Pen goes, it seems to just provide basic pin input functionality. Like when I touch here, you'll see it'll highlight the areas, which I think is a default behavior if you're not actually drawing. Uh, the only thing, though, is I notice the button doesn't do anything when I'm clicking it. Um, and I know with Wacom EMR pins, usually you can like press and rotate and stuff like that. So that functionality doesn't appear to be present, but the pin does work and it does notice the hover over action. So as I hover over the items, you see it's highlighting them right there and I'm not actually touching the screen. So, yeah, it does have some pin input. Um, again, I'm very novice with this CAD stuff. This is my first time using it. But um, hopefully this is enough to kind of give you a feeling of how this is going to work on your machine. Again, we can move around and stuff. Everything seems pretty smooth. I don't know. I don't see any issues. Um, is it good enough for you? I don't know. You know, I have no idea, but hopefully this is enough to give you an idea. So this is Fusion 360 on the Book 2 Pro 360. All right, our next question comes to us from Massive Action. It's more of a comment, and this is in regards to Samsung Flow working with the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And uh, Massive Action states, does not work with the S23 Ultra, and I traded in my Fold 3 for it. Well, first off, my friend, I think you made a wise decision on your trade-in. I will take the S23 Ultra 100 times out of 100 times over the Fold 3. Just my own personal choice. I think it's a much better device. All right, so Samsung Flow is not working with your S23 Ultra and your Tab S8 Ultra. All right, so I've got both those devices sitting right here. And I have yet to use Samsung Flow with either one of these. So we're gonna get these synced up and set up in real time real quick. So on the tablet, let's go ahead and do this real quick. We're gonna go ahead and type Flow. Let's open this up. There's Samsung Flow. 
All right, blah, blah, blah about your verifi verifying your identity, da, 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 we don't care. Let's go up here to the dots, connect to a new phone. All right, the key to success here is to make sure your de both devices are on Bluetooth, both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network, and both devices are signed into the same Samsung account. And as you can see here, we have S23 Ultra, and you'll see here it notices it by Bluetooth. So perhaps you didn't have Bluetooth on. Let's go ahead and turn that, go ahead and click on that, I mean. Connect your devices, connecting, couldn't connect. Make sure your phone was, has Samsung Flow turned on. All right, so let's just follow its directions. So we're gonna grab the S23 Ultra here. I'll get it in screen view. Let's do the same thing, Flow. All right, Samsung Flow. All right, so it's up. Let's try this again. So we've got Samsung Flow up and going. Let's see if I have the same pr problem as you. Connection methods, Wi-Fi or LAN, Bluetooth. Let's try Wi-Fi this time, what the heck, why not? Connect your device. It's showing this code right here. I'm gonna click OK. Give it just a second, click OK here. While using this app, allow. We've got our usual permissions. Sorry, I'm not in camera view there. Apologize about that. Let's allow. Go to, go to settings for permissions. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We should see Samsung Flow in this list. And you see we need to grant it a permission here. Let's go ahead and do that. Allow. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the application. And boom, we have Samsung Flow going here. Test. Send. And there it is. Let's do another one real quick. Test two. Send it. There it is, test two. So Samsung Flow is pretty easy to set up. Maybe you're missing that permission. Um, maybe you chose a different connection method, but we just walked through the first time setup of it. Hopefully you see the S23 Ultra in your list. Again, make sure Bluetooth is on, Wi-Fi enabled, and you're connected, or I should say signed in, to the same Samsung network, and you'll be all set. Uh, if you have any questions still about this, please drop them down below, and I'm happy to help you offline. You know, we can uh, shoot some emails back and forth and get you get your situation resolved. But uh, here we go, Samsung Flow working between the S23 Ultra and the Tab S8 Ultra. All right, our next question comes to us from Nate. Good stuff, thanks for putting this out. A question, you mentioned that increased tightness and decreased wobble of the new Book 3 Pro 360 do you think four to five years from now that it will noticeably loosen up or do you think it will still be reasonably tight? I have been torn between the 16 inch i7 Book 3 Pro and Pro 360. Someone raised the concern that the Pro 360 might be looser and not hold its extended open position as well beyond 90 degrees, say up to roughly 160 degrees versus the Pro. Do you think that should be a concern here? My idea is when going mobile in my SUV, with the tent of the Pro 360, I might tent it over and might tent it over the gear shift between the two front seats while monitoring the market and just put it back in clamshell shape to actively do something. While with the Pro though, I can't tent it. I imagine I can open it up as much as possible, maybe up to around 160 degrees or so, and then just place it behind the gear shift with the back side of the screen leaning against the dash higher up. In both cases, being able to monitor streaming quotes with it in some position over and beyond the gear shift. I'm inclined to get the 360 for added flexibility of what it can do, but maybe not if the 360 won't hold the roughly 160 degree open position very well. Thus my question for you. Hopefully I've explained it well, thanks. Uh, well, Nate, that's a very long question. I think I got the gist of what you're saying. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so Nate, we got the uh, Book 3 Pro 360 sitting here. I've got it all the way flattened out here. And I just want to give you an idea how stiff this is. So if we sit this like this, you can see here, even with me moving this, that lid doesn't want to droop too much. You know, it stays pretty, pretty darn steady all the way around. So if you're planning on keeping it like 160 degrees, that's going to be about like that. You know, it does lay flat. Um, I feel like it just wants to drop. I don't know if you're going to see that, but the lid is starting to drop. So you kind of got to be up at about 150 degrees or so, and that's not really going to come through on camera. You know, you got to kind of be up like this, or it does want to start to tilt down. But like you mentioned, you still have the option of going all the way around like this, 
and putting this between your gear shifter, right? I think this will work well for you. And I don't think this hinge is really going to loosen up. I had the original Book Pro 360 and then the Book 2 and now the Book 3. I didn't notice any hinge changes over time with any of these models so far. So I think that'll be fine. So I think for your particular use case, the Book 3 Pro 360 will work out pretty well. Um, you know, this is pretty stiff for sure all the way around. It's just when you get it close to being all the way down like this, it starts to loosen up a little bit right around there. And then as you come around that area, it starts to tighten back up, you know? So it is a little bit loose in this area in comparison, you know, it's still tight, but as far as it being tight as compared to the rest of it, it's a little looser here and then it gets super tight right here in this area. So hopefully this helps answer your question. Thanks, Nate, appreciate you. All right, our next question comes to us from John. John writes in, how is the performance of the Book 3 Pro 360 on battery? And how long will it last while editing videos? And can the S Pen on the S23 Ultra work on the Book 3 Pro 360? Hey John, thank you so much for the question. So the performance on the Book 3 Pro 360 when editing videos and in general is absolutely fantastic. Um, we already did a video on it. I'll link it down in the description. Uh, but basically the render times are about two to two and a half times the actual content length. You know, for minimal edits, if you go really intense with it, I'm sure that's gonna increase the time a little bit. But like for a 10 minute long video, it took about 24 minutes to render a 4K video. And uh, the battery life on it's pretty good as well. So while you're editing itself, it's not very demanding. It's not a very demanding process. It's the rendering process that'll really start to kill your battery because that's gonna hit the CPU hard. So you should get at least a few hours while editing, if not more. I mean, at full maximum brightness in optimized mode, I got like seven and a half hours or so of video playback. Now granted, editing is a little more taxing than just sitting there and watching videos, but I wouldn't be surprised if you got at least, you know, three and a half, four hours or so of editing uh, in optimized or high performance mode with the brightness up there pretty good, which I think is pretty decent without having power. Um, but that's not counting like long renders. That'll really churn through the battery life really quick. And as far as the S23 Ultra S Pen working on the Book 3 Pro 360, well, I've got the S23 Ultra here. Let's grab the S Pen. All right, we'll check the pen button real quick to see if it pulls up the menu. Sometimes this menu is a little bit slow to pull up. Let's see. Finally came up. Let's create a new note. And let's start uh, writing here. Test. And let's test the button. That's where we usually have the problem. All right, erase is fine. So yeah, looks like the S23 Ultra S Pen works just fine on the Book 3 Pro 360. Thanks, John, appreciate the question. Our next question comes to us from Lost in OC. I have a question, which screen is better? The Tab S8 OLED or the Book 3 Pro OLED? Which gives a better movie watching experience? All right, Lost in OC, so we've got the Tab S8 Ultra here to the left, Book 3 Pro over to the right, and you're asking about which one gives you the better movie watching experience? Well, my friend, this is really, really a tough call. So it's kind of a two-part thing. On one hand, you have a little bit bigger screen on this side, right? So with the 16 by 10 aspect ratio giving you black bars, you get more viewable content on the Book 3 Pro 360. However, the screen resolution on the Tab S8 Ultra is a little bit higher, not by much. However, the screen resolution is a tad bit higher on the Tab S8 Ultra, and with it being 14.6 inches, you get a little bit higher pixel density, closer to around 250 or so, instead of the 210, 211 on the Book 3 Pro 360. And what I'm getting at is that the image is gonna look just a little bit sharper. Now, do I actually notice it in person, having these devices side by side? No, not at all. Not at all, so I wouldn't even really make that a divine decision. So my friend, I would go by the size and portability. Um, and as far as audio goes, ah, man, they're both great. They really are, you're, you're not gonna lose out either one. You just gotta make sure Dolby Atmos is turned on this Book 3 Pro 360. You want it on the tablet too, but it makes a bigger difference here. And when you have it on, I'd say they're pretty close to being equal. They're both great movie watching experiences. And as far as the brightness goes, they're both pretty much the same as well. 500 nits HDR, and I think you get about the same on the Tab S8 Ultra. Uh, I don't know, I don't really notice much of a difference. So I think for movie content, I think you're fine with either machine. They both look absolutely amazing. Thanks for the question. 
Our next question comes in from someone whose name I cut off. I'm going to go ahead and look back at the video to find that name. I'll put it up on the screen here. I am truly sorry about that. Sometimes I get in a hurry when I'm doing these whole copy and paste things for these video. Uh, but the question you have is, hey, excellent videos, and I love that you answer our questions. Any particular thoughts on using OneNote on the Book 3? How is the pin latency on OneNote compared to Samsung Notes? Sorry if you've already touched on this in a video. I'm relatively new to the channel. Well, hey, thank you so much for the great question. Let's go ahead and tackle that real quick. All right, so OneNote versus Samsung Notes. So historically, I've always preferred Samsung Notes just because a little bit lower latency and I just... Just seems like it was more connected, the feeling of it. But I will say on the Book 3 Pro 360, going back and forth between OneNote here and Samsung Notes, I'm really impressed with OneNote this year. I don't know if it's just the, how it's working on this particular laptop, or maybe there's been some improvements to OneNote since the last time I used it, because it has been several months. But I'm sitting here and I've been playing around with some testing as I have tests written on here. And um, as I'm sitting here writing, I feel like the experience is better than ever. I mean, I'm being serious too. Like this feels very well connected. Um, and now I'll let me go ahead and switch over to S notes. Cause here's the other thing too, is I'm noticing the palm rejection is fine too. Like I'm not having any weird stuff pop up. You see here, normally it'll interfere and cause interference while you're going around. Nothing like that this year. And I had that a lot on the book two pro 360, like all the time often. So let me go ahead and switch over to uh, Samsung notes. All right, so Samsung Notes is open, or S Notes, and we'll go ahead and start writing here. Testing. And to be honest, it feels about the same as OneNote. Maybe just a tad bit more connected feeling, but nothing like what we saw with last year's model in the original Book Pro 360. So I think the gap between the two products has been less than quite a bit, at least here on this year's model with the Book 3 Pro 360. Um, I think OneNote and S Notes will serve you both well. I don't notice much of a difference, really. Both of these note-taking applications are working very well. Uh, I don't think you'll have any problems with either. I'm really impressed with OneNote this year. Thanks for the question. Our last question for this week comes in from Javier, and this is in regards to the Tab S8 Ultra versus Book 3 Pro 360. I'm split between the two and feel like they both have a beautiful screen. Yeah, Javier, I totally agree with you. This is going to be mostly for browsing the web and some app usage, but really want the best audio and visual experience. Is the Book 3 360 dramatically better than the Ultra? You know, you can't go wrong with either one. I think they both offer a great experience. Um, and you're asking, is the Book 3 360 dramatically better than the Ultra? No, my friend, actually from a technical standpoint, technically the Tab S8 Ultra is better than the Book 3. That's because you're looking at a 2960 by 1848 resolution versus 2880 by 1800 over here. And that gives us 240 pixels per inch. I mentioned 250 in the last question, but it's actually 240 versus 211 here. So you've got a little bit sharper screen on this model, and it really kind of comes down to which screen size you prefer. Do you want the bigger 16 inch panel, or do you want to go with a little bit smaller 14.6 inch screen? And as far as audio goes, pretty much a wash. I think they're both great. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. All right, and that's going to wrap up week six of weekly Q&A. If you have any Samsung-related questions that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming video, please leave them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time, and as always, thanks for watching.